All right, everyone, I have to weigh in now on Biden's acceptance acceptance speech. And of course, it was sort of what I expected. I think he did a little bit better than some people expected as far as not going off the rails, not making any major verbal stumbles or gaffes. There were a couple of minor ones. And keep in mind, he's making at least a few minor gaffes in this speech, even while he's reading a script. That's not great, but it is better than the alternative, which is he could have made some major mistake. He could have gone off in an Alzheimer's moment and started talking about corn pop or something, which would show the entire Dem party on a live stage. Well, actually, not the entire Dem party because it's digital only and nobody's really watching. I think more people were watching Crowder's live stream of the DNC uh, uh, last night of, of Biden's speech and so forth. More people were watching Crowder by almost an order of magnitude. Then we're watching like the C-SPAN uh, link. And <laughs> this has happened over and over. Analysis of the weird shit that the Democrats are doing is more popular than the Democrats' own coverage of it or the legacy media fluff coverage that they get. Like they're not going to get criticized by CNN. CNN will say, well, Joe Biden delivered a historic speech today, uniting the party and the people, and Trump is dead this time. Anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about the speech itself because it was as vacuous as expected. He was trying to echo Obama, and 10 years ago he probably would have succeeded. Oh, we need hope and light. Choose the path of light, not of darkness. These are dark times. Invoking the idea of light and darkness to try to say, well, basically Trump is evil, he's bigoted, and he doesn't know what he's doing, the country's going to hell. You need to elect me in order to change that. This is an argument that stops really making sense, I think, to the average independent voter when you look at the riots going on. When you look at the death total differentials between blue and red states for, from coronavirus, uh, and when you look at diplomacy, when you compare sort of yesteryear's diplomacy to what's happening now, peace breaking out between Israel and the UAE, progress in North Korea, uh, reformed NAFTA to USMCA, things of that nature. Um, when you look at all those things, it, it really becomes an issue of, of not perception versus reality, but really just two warring perceptions. The perception of the a Democrat right now, or at least 90% of them, is the country's going to hell. The perception of the Republicans is the same. The difference? They blame the Democrats for it. They don't blame Donald Trump. He's got legendary amounts of in-party loyalty that's probably not going anywhere unless something even more major happens. It's hard to think of something that could hit harder than coronavirus plus a deep recession. Which, by the way, is being ameliorated, and that's the other part. If Biden is going to make a pitch primarily based on things are going to hell and things stop going to hell before November in the next couple of months, that's really going to sink that argument. The problem is that he's got no other platform. You didn't hear anything. It was vacuous sloganeering. Oh, I believe in light, not darkness. Choose the path of light. It's, it's, it's empty. There's no actual platform there. He's talking about we need to tackle climate change, but doesn't go into specifics. The economy's crumbling. Here's how I'm not going to change anything. There's racism. Here's how I'm not going to reform things. The other thing that you see as far as the response goes, and I'm seeing this even from Democrats. I'm seeing this from the further left Dems, like the Bernie bros. He had 50 years in fucking government and never did any of these things. He was never an environmental hawk. He was never uh, 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 beyond center left, at least on guns, uh, until very recently politically. He certainly wasn't leading the way on, on progress, uh, if you can call it that, with my racial justice, my social justice warrior stuff. He, he stood above the fray even when he was vice president. Before that, he was one of the moderate Democrats and, and uh, uh, usually abstained from that sort of, of rhetoric. He was never part of that edge. Uh, he's not an AOC. He's, he's not a Bernie Sanders, in other words. He's not an economic far leftist. He, he pretends now. On, he, on TV, he plays a far leftist. But look at the response. It's about, number one, it's about what you've done, not what you're saying. And Biden hasn't done any of the things uh, that he's planning to do. And I guarantee you, if he's elected, he won't. It'll be just like Obama not closing Gitmo. It'll be like Trump not locking her up. Presidents say a lot of shit on a campaign trail that they don't intend to do. When Trump gives his acceptance speech, he will lay out some ideas for what he wants to do. If re-elected, he will focus on two or three of them and ignore the rest. Presidents always do that because you're trying to, apply, you're trying to uh, appeal to a large group of people to try to get voted for. Once you get elected, you have the mandate to do those things, but you're never going to actually have enough time to do them. Even if you are masterful at arranging time, like like uh, 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 what's, uh, Eisenhower, he had a whole four-square scheduling system that relied upon whether something was 
uh, important and had to be done right now or it didn't really need to be done and he, he had an idea he could delegate it to other people if it was important but it wasn't particularly urgent if it was both important and urgent he would get on it right away and in, in scheduling wise it's a very good strategy but even then you're still going to make promises that you fundamentally can't keep even if you want to by the way sometimes he is stymied by the legislature Trump wishes the entire wall were built right now instead of about a third of it <laughs> but the thing is he gets stymied for two years on budgeting even his own Republicans thwarted him initially. Then when he finally got the power in the Senate, uh, he was stood in the way of by the Ninth Circuit, which he's now completely overhauled. And now, of course, he's got his money and his wallet is going up at an expedited rate. But he's not going to get the entire thing done by November. But it will be a success, technically speaking. At least it's a mostly true success. But Fuentes has climbed back aboard the MAGA train now. Said the other day, well, fuck it, MAGA hat's back on. And he's not alone. There are so many people, and I know some of them, there are people that are either, they're further right and they didn't like that Trump sort of uh, uh, dragged his heels in their mind. Of course, I've explained why that's not true. They didn't like that the wall wasn't built. They didn't like it wasn't tall enough. It wasn't thick enough. It wasn't a medieval fortification or something. But most of them have climbed back aboard because the Democrats have spent the last few days alienating every independent voter in the country and proving to us they are the party of riot. They are the party of rioting. They are the party of communist tolerance. They're the, party of, uh, they're the party of trying to disarm people. You look at Chicago, I'll be doing a video on this in a minute, about how Lori Lightfoot, the mayor of Chicago, sh uh, the police there have cordoned off the block that her home is part of so that people can't protest there. Anywhere else, go ahead and throw bricks. You're perfectly fine. Night after night of Antifa and BLM thug riots, that's fine. Just don't get near the mayor's house. She needs her sleep. The poor lady needs her sleep. The lady that's, that's allowing the riots to happen. That's the Democrats. The Democrats are the ones at this point responsible for lockdown-related economic recession. They're the ones keeping things locked down. By and large, it's Dem governors and mayors that are making life difficult for local businesses. It's not, not Trump's fault. Trump is the one saying, open things back up, get the kids back to school. The Democrats are all big about education, and they're sitting there trying to figure out ways where they can keep taxing people the same amount for education without delivering anything. I mean, it's a bunch of fucking horseshit. And Biden wouldn't change any of the problems that do exist. If Biden gets elected, the first thing I expect to happen is the economy goes into a downward spiral. Because at least right now you have high business confidence and the stock market is doing well. At the top end, things are hunky-dory right now, economically. That's trickling down and it's absorbing unemployment. You had the last, the last numbers uh, for July, 1.8 million new jobs. While the recovery is slowing down, over the course of this subsequent month, we will be below 10% unemployment. That's goddamn great, considering how high it got climbed. Oh, we've got a massive economic problem, dude. The economy Trump built is so robust that we didn't slip into a Great Depression despite the fact that we spent an entire month locking the entire economy down, and for two months after that, partially in a, you know, a dumb patchwork all around the country, we're still making it impossible for many businesses to even reopen. And we're still not in a depression. I think that's great. That's a testament to the strength of the Trump economy. The one that they wanted to call it the Obama economy. Now the Trump economy kicked in the second the problem started. You may have noticed that. Essentially, what Biden's platform boils down to is Trump is responsible for all the problems in the country. The problem? The Democrats haven't offered any pragmatic solutions. They're, they're still talking about my Green New Deal. Oh, now, fuck it. You're unemployed. There are riots in your city, uh, it's fine. We're gonna take more of your guns away, tax you more, and we're gonna ban cow farts. That's what the Democrats are doing. And it's not its not hitting a chord with the independent voters. I think that they are perilously close to alienating most of the independent core of the country. These people are still, jury still out on who they're gonna support. You'd think, let me ask you this, if they were sold on Biden, wouldn't they have already fucking jumped aboard now, considering the problems that are going on? They're not gonna blame Trump. In the end, they're gonna blame the Democrats, I think, lopsidedly. In the end, I think even center-left voters will abandon them. And Kamala Harris doesn't help either. Kamala Harris is not a great debater. The debates are coming up fairly soon. Uh, she's got a long track record of being a virulent, vicious attack dog prosecutor, of being a high-tax uh, uh, moron senator. That doesn't really add that much to the uh, presidential ticket, as far as Biden's acceptance speech goes. It hits the right notes for the core fan base of the party, but the problem is those people have low enthusiasm, and so he needed to also energize people. 
There's no energy here. This was almost a conciliatory style of speech. What he needed to do was go full attack dog mode and amp up the energy. The problem, when Biden attempts to do that, he says dumb things. He starts saying things that pop into his head that he's not reading off the teleprompter. That would fucking sink his presidential ambitions. I fully expect that during the debates, you're going to see Trump antagonize him over and over, and eventually Biden will crack and take the bait because he's not going to have a teleprompter in front of him. Unless, of course, they manage to get us all conned into accepting a, a, a debate style that's digital only, in which case Biden will be in his office with his bunny slippers on, and definitely he'll have two wires, one in each ear, and he will definitely have notes in front of him. That's about all. Peace out.